it's time to start working on this hall and getting it lit. The first thing I want to talk about is the LED from Lighthouse LEDs. I'll go ahead and leave the link on these. The reason why I want to use these LEDs is because the ones that came with the trumpeter kit, they get extremely, extremely hot. Problem with having those hot LEDs, they'll start emitting heat and that's going to cause all the adhesive to start peeling off. It's just going to be a mess. Just do not use those. The next thing we picked up from Lighthouse is all these fiber optic wires. It's very various sizes. Just like I said, I'll leave all the links below. And the next thing is we're going to be using this T-fitting. Now, if you notice, these wires are not separate. So you want to pick up this type of wire just to have some cable management. The next thing I was contemplating on using was uh, this remote control. The problem with this was if this goes bad, you will lose all your lights. So I came up with an idea to make an adapter that will go in line with the power plug that we put in here. That should work. Let's go ahead and start getting this thing set up. The first thing we want to do is actually lay the LEDs inside the hall. And uh, let's go ahead and show you how we did that. So we're going to put this first strip in here. I clean this edge that I didn't paint with lack of thinner. Let's go ahead and get this guy in here. Start off with a one millimeter fiber optic. Basically, just get your flathead clippers and just clip and keep making a whole bunch of these. Those edges are pretty jagged. No matter what tool I use or how sharp, they're pretty ugly looking. So get yourself a piece of sanding stick. And as you put them on, just sand the side that's going to be on the hull. I just put the stick down and just Now you see what it looks like over there, nice and flat. Okay, so what we want to do is, this is the side we just sanded, let's just put it in one of the holes to see what it looks like. And that's nice and bright. So we've done a lot of these already. Drop them in there. So now that you got them all in there, go ahead and push them in with your fingers so they can fall flush. And then you just run your finger through to make sure none of them are extruding out. As you can see, now that we've dimmed the lights, we have good illumination coming out of the fiber optics. We're going to go ahead and complete the rest of these off camera, and then we'll show you what it looks like once we're done. Now that we have several of these one millimeter fiber optic wires in here, I want to go ahead and briefly show you how we went on ahead and secured them within the inside of the hall. Once again, I forgot to hit the record button. Basically, I just apply some of this Gorilla Glue. I just used a toothpick and basically went on the top of each one of these guys. And double check your fiber optic that it's not sticking too far out on the outside of the hall. Just continue on doing this 
that will secure them nicely in place. I also tried securing these with some super glue and that's definitely not a good idea. For some reason super glue it kind of dulls it. And yeah, so do not use super glue to secure these guys. I'll give you guys a little tip. In these top rows of lights, in some areas, you can't seem to get it through no matter how hard you push. What you don't want to do is re-drill these guys. So how would you fix that issue? You get the drill bit that you had to drill these guys. What you do is you take the drill bit itself, put it backwards in the drill bit, and basically what you're doing is you're making a punch. You just take your new uh, punch, position it right in the hole, and just kind of push yourself through. So let's see if they go through now. Look at that, right through, no problem. And there's your tip. While putting these fiber optics, what I discovered was that some of them illuminate more than others. If you get a sharp uh, nail clipper like this, go ahead and cut them about a couple millimeters out of the hull. But the point is to keep them all straight, pretty much parallel with the hull. And just clip and just keep going down the line and keep them all pretty much the same. And just do this all the way down. You do them for every single one of them. The little guys, I pretty much clip f almost flush with the hull. And then you just go down the line and just keep clipping them. Now on the end, there's no light illuminating in this deep area. So you have to bend them in and face them towards the light. So these are the lights that we cut. Actually, we cut most of them out. And if you notice, they look pretty even as far as the illumination is concerned. I've been using this power pack to light the hall up. But now it's time to get off the power pack and actually install the power that goes in here. We're ready to put this guy in right here. So basically all I did was take the um, test board and pretty much put it all on this support that we picked up. So we'll drop this support in here. First we want to get this wire through this hole that I cut over here. This is going in permanently. Dropped right in, look at that. I'm gonna put these supports in here just to position this in the exact place where it needs to be because we're gonna be gluing this in because we're planning on not moving this anymore. Let's check voltage coming in and we are on the right track. So I don't know if you can see this but we have 12.3 coming right into the hall. dropping some solder on the poles over here so it would be easier to hook up. So let's see if we light up. And there we go. 
So there you have it. We are now connected to the power outlet to the wall. I made this adapter for this wireless connection. So let's see how this works. We need to leave it on. could just power it on and off with the remote so basically once we glued this in we're just gonna go ahead we just went on ahead and just secured it in place make sure that it doesn't move and I didn't tighten these at all just enough just to get it to actually touch each side of the hull as far as the remote control is concerned, basically I picked up an on and off switch that will go in line with the connections I had. I removed everything and just used these two wires and basically took the remote re the receiver, unsoldered these and soldered these in the proper place. That's basically all I did. And you'll have your remote control. At the end of the day, this is coming out very well. So when you look at it from a distance, you have to be happy with that.